So today we're building this, a super clean 1440p gaming machine in the Cooler Master NR200. It runs really, really quiet. Uh, it's really easy to put together as well if you can find the parts. And I think for a mainstream ITX gaming machine, this is really hard to beat. Now I am well aware of the current state of the PC hardware market. So firstly, a bit of a disclaimer, this build guide is mostly for those in the US and other areas that are less affected by the current price hikes and lack of availability. I know the prices for certain Certain hardware in Australia and New Zealand are pretty terrible right now, especially for GPUs, and apparently over in Europe it's even worse. But regardless of the current stock situation, I've been really itching to put something like this together, a really effective mainstream ITX gaming PC. And even if you don't use this list part for part, you can kind of at least use it as a template, if not now, then at least in the future. So with all of that said, let's take a look at the parts, put all of it together, and then see how it performs. So let's start with the case, the Cooler Master NR200. At about 18 liters in volume, it's not the most compact ITX case out there, but it is small enough to use as a desktop machine, but also big enough to accommodate large graphics cards, future upgrades, and liquid cooling. It's also a fairly affordable option as well, coming in at around $100, which for a space optimized ITX case is a very decent price. Now, some of you might be wondering why not go for the Supt Meshalicious, which I called recently the ITX case to beat in 2021, and there are a few reasons. Firstly, it doesn't really fit the build that we're going with here. The Meshalicious really excels when it comes to liquid cooling, but that's not something that I can really justify in this price range, which if you can get all the parts at MSRP comes to around 1350 US. So for this build, we'll be sticking to air cooling both our CPU and GPU, and the NR200 there is superior. Also, the Meshalicious hasn't technically launched yet, and with a PCIe 4.0 riser cable, which is pretty much necessary, it's at least $65 more than the NR200. 200. So it's definitely still an option, just not my first pick when it comes to these specific parts and this budget. Now the CPU that we're going with here is one that recently launched, it's the Intel i5-11400F. Now despite what you've heard about Intel getting absolutely smashed by AMD Ryzen in the last 2-3 to three years, which is 100% true, this processor is actually a really solid deal. 6 cores, 12 threads with boost clocks up to 4.4GHz and the gaming performance here is really great at just $175. I will mention this is the F version without an integrated GPU, but if the price between this and the non-F version in your region is about the same, you might as well go with the non-F version to get those integrated graphics just as a backup. We'll be pairing this with a B560 motherboard, in this case the MSI B560i Gaming Edge. This has absolutely everything we need to get this build up and running, including two M.2 slots, USB Type-C, Wi-Fi 6, and 2.5 gigabit LAN. Now we will actually be running our i5 CPU on this motherboard with unlocked power limits, which believe it or not means that it can pull over 140 watts in some applications. This means that we get a lot more performance compared to if we were just to limit it at its default 65 watts, but at the same time it means that our stock in-box cooler is just not enough. So here we've spent 40 bucks on a nice little upgrade, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black. And a first for Intel when it comes to their mainstream motherboard series, in this case B560, we're actually allowed to enable XMP for our DDR4 memory kit above the spec of the CPU. So I've gone with what I think is one of the best value memory kits that you can get at the moment, 16 gigabytes of crucial ballistics memory clocked at 3600 megahertz CL16. This will set you back just $94 US, which is a seriously good deal. Now let's talk about the GPU, which is probably the most flexible part in this entire list. In a perfect world, I recommend going with an RTX 3070 for this budget. At $500, you're basically getting RTX 2080 Ti performance, perfect for a high refresh 1440p monitor and even capable at 4K in some games. But as we know, GPUs are also the hardest thing in the world to find right now. So whether you go with an RTX 3070 or a 3060 Ti, or perhaps find a deal for a secondhand 1080 Ti, that's completely up to you. All I'm saying is that an RTX 3070 would fit this build really, really well. So if it's possible for you to line up at your local micro center in store and pick one up, or even possibly put in a pre-order, that would be ideal. The specific model that I'm going with here is 
the Founders Edition model, seeing as that's pretty much the only one that's possible to pick up at MSRP, but the much larger aftermarket cards also have no problem fitting in this case. Then for case fans, at this price range, we're going with none other than the Arctic P12. Of course, the Noctua NF-A12s would be my first pick, but at over $30 per fan, that's the same price that you can get five Arctic P12s for. So these will give us a ton of airflow at a low noise level and at an affordable price as well. And then when it comes to the power supply, I'll be using a staple of mine for mid-range ITX gaming builds, the Corsair SF600 Platinum. This will handle our components absolutely no problem at all and stay really quiet at the same time. And I'm a big fan of these sleeved cables as well. And then for storage, you can't go wrong keeping it simple with a single one terabyte P1 stick from Crucial. So here is the finished build, RTX 3070, i5 11400 and tons of airflow in an ITX form factor. Honestly this turned out way cleaner than I expected and as you can see it was actually really easy to put together thanks to the NR200 being so roomy. Cable management was also pretty straightforward, a couple of zip ties here and there can really go a long way and I'm personally really loving the full black, no nonsense, anti-RGB theme of the finished build. I think this is just really satisfying to look at, very simple and clean. Some of you may have noticed that I did end up changing changing the orientation of the CPU cooler just to go with the rest of the airflow direction of the build which is pretty much entirely vertical. One important note with this cooler though is that it does get pretty close to maxing out what is possible here in this case at 160 mils in height and that means that you won't be able to use the side bracket for the fans, radiators or storage and the optional tempered glass panel does not fit with this cooler either. So if you'd really want to use that side bracket for those accessories or the tempered glass panel you definitely should go for a smaller cooler. But in in terms of thermal and noise performance, I'm happy to report this build is exceptionally good. All I changed in the BIOS was enabling XMP for our 3600 MHz kit, make sure that our CPU is running with unlimited power settings, and also making sure our fans are all set to PWM mode. So here we can see that our i5-11400 is having no problem running out of spec in terms of power, pulling over 130 watts in Blender with still very reasonable temperatures. This pretty much represents worst case for this CPU in terms of load and temperatures, there aren't many other work workloads out there that are going to push it this far. This was also with all of the fans in the build at just 1200 RPM which was incredibly quiet and with no undervolting either. As for GPU thermals, the results here were even better. After running Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p with ray tracing and DLSS enabled for about 40 minutes, the GPU was sitting comfortably at just around 65 degrees C at a room ambient of 22. The peak CPU temps were also within a very safe range and again this was with the case fan set to just 1200 RPM. RPM. Here's an idea of what the build sounded like at full gaming load with some mouse clicks for reference. Overall, for a high-end 1440p desktop gaming machine, I really don't think you can do better than this. Whether you're playing competitive titles or single-player story-driven games, the performance here is just impossible to be disappointed with. Not to mention, you could also use this build for streaming by using the really solid NVENC encoder on the RTX 3070. I will also say that I find it hard to recommend building something larger than this for this set of components. As we can see, the airflow and thermal performance here is absolutely no problem. Again, the NR200 is is by no means the tiniest case in the world to build in, but it is still about one third of the size of your average mid tower, 
and I think it has the thermal and noise performance to back it up. It does make building in a mid-tower a bit hard to justify, especially if you are just building with an i5 and an RTX 3070. And again, future upgrades will be no problem at all here. Let's say you wanna go with a 16 core CPU. You can mount a 280 mil liquid cooler in no problem uh, on the side using the bracket. And then when it comes to the GPU, you can even fit something like an ASUS Strix RTX 3090 in here with two slim fans at the bottom. So this is pretty much the perfect 1440p mainstream ITX gaming machine in my opinion. And I will have the parts listed down below if you wanna check pricing and availability. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.